Good evening, Patriots. Crazy Hawk 99 here. Uh, before we get into this whole uh, thing on uh, universal background checks, I think they might as well call them common sense background checks because they like that phrase, but it makes as much sense. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about a, uh, a looming date. And unfortunately, it's not a prom date or anything like that. And by the way, yes, I'm having a libation, and I want to handle some firearms in front of you here. They're all safety checked, and uh, I'm a big boy. Uh, there's, you know, nobody would say anything if I was sitting in front of a car, having a beer, talking about the car. So, uh, granted, uh, you know, we're, we have to treat ourselves as, as adults and act accordingly so I can have a drink and uh, not get stupid. But uh, before we talk about the universal background checks, uh, there's a date that's coming up rapidly. And this, this firearm may remind you of what that date is. It is the ATF's enforcement of their new brace rule. Whether you've got something like this, this, this beautiful machine here, or a CZ Scorpion, you know, it doesn't matter the caliber, this scorpion here, or this, this beautiful um, grand power, what do they call it? A, I can never say it, Strybog. I always want to say Strybog. Strybog, uh, nine millimeter. It doesn't matter the caliber. It doesn't really matter. Honestly, it doesn't really matter the length. If it's, if it's less than 16 inches barrel and 26 inches overall, it's, it, it, and it has a brace on it, you've got a problem. Um, doesn't really matter. That that date uh, when the ATF is going to enforce that is 31 May. So that's right around the corner. Now, in the other video I did, you'll recall that I, I had uh, optimistic um, an optimistic opinion that uh, that the powers in uh, powers that be and and organizations uh, that that are fighting for us will fight this thing and they are they are fighting it but uh the wheels of justice turn slowly when it's in, when it comes to righting uh, a wrong um, it's uh quick when when uh, you're found it at fault but when it's the government you're trying to undo something the government did it's very slow i still am optimistic that this thing will get turned around i'm not optimistic that we'll see it happen before 31 may so that said um, I talked a little bit about one of my previous videos and what you need to do before then. Bottom line is you need to have a plan what you're going to do. If you're going to remove your braces, if you're going to go ahead and apply for a uh, SBR tax uh, free of charge uh, if you do it before 31 May. And uh, as I understand it, the ATF, not that I trust them, but they've said even if the the uh, their their the stamp doesn't come back before 31 May. As long as you've applied for it by 31 May, they won't touch you. Um, you know, take that for what it's worth. Uh, um, I'll just, I just, I just want to point out some of the lunacy of it. This right here requires no stamp. It's got a buttstock on it, and it's a 16-inch barrel. And I'm going to hold up a pistol with a brace on it, and you're going to see... The brace, the end of the brace, and the end of the buttstock are pretty much married up, and you're going to see the length difference. This one, you're good to go as long as you can legally own a firearm in general. This one, 31 May, if I leave it in this, this configuration, I haven't done anything to register it and apply for an SBR, I will be guaranteed up to 10 years in prison and a $250,000 fine for this one. That's per offense, so if you count these other ones in there, well, I won't live long enough to finish out that sentence. But just the, the length and the difference in length in these things is this long, and that's how ridiculous this whole thing is. So that's all I'm gonna say on braces right now. By all means, if you got a comment or a question on braces, drop it in the drop it in the comments below or, or hit me up and, and I'll try to answer it as best I can, whether it's the brace or the brace rule. But let's talk about universal background checks. Oh, uh, heck, maybe decades ago, I probably didn't think that was a bad idea, you know. Um, I, 
I, I don't know for sure. I, I can't envision that, but who knows what I thought when I was young. And I can see where, without peeling back the onion, people might think universal background checks. That's a good thing. Now, what is a universal background check? Um, gun show loophole, universal background check, they're all kind of interwoven. Um, so for those people that have, have purchased a gun before they know, when you go to a, a, a authorized dealer, an FFL, Federal Firearms License Dealer, uh, and you buy a gun, you fill out a 4473, and they 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 sit, hit that up to the FBI, uh, contact the FBI, and they run it and check it, and you come up clean or you don't. Um, that's your background check, okay? Um, so any any gun you buy at a dealer, that's going to happen. So if you order a gun online. Um, you can order a gun online, but it won't be sent to your home unless you're an FFL dealer. It'll be sent to whatever dealer you re you uh, indicate on the order in your area, and then you go to that dealer to pick it up, and he runs the background check on it. Uh, so those so when you, they talk about guns bought online, you can buy a gun online. Sure you can, but it's no different than buying it at a dealer. Uh, gun shows. Let's talk about gun shows. Um, you can buy in some states... Virginia's no longer one of them, but you can buy at a gun show a gun without doing a background check with an asterisk there with when did it happen? Well, if you're buying it from a private individual that's not a dealer, he's just selling one of his firearms. Like, let's just say I, I live in Missouri still, I don't, but uh, if I set up in a gun shop, gun show there, I, I rented a table and put a couple of my guns out that, you know, I want to get rid of or maybe because I want to say, say, bring in some more money to buy some more guns, whatever, whatever the reason, doesn't matter. It's my property, I'm selling it. You wouldn't have to legally do a background check, but that's, at gun shows, that's the minuscule amount of people that are at a gun show. Most, everybody that's got a table is a dealer. And dealers at a gun show have to do it just like they do at their store. They have to run a background check, and they do. I've purchased a gun at a gun show, gun, gun show before, and the, and the individual uh, dealer bought or ran me through, did a 4473, 09. So they throw that around like people are buying buying guns, you know, without a background check willy-nilly. And it does happen for private sales, private transfers. But it's not as big as they make it sound. But now, okay, let's just say you think that maybe everybody, every sale should have a universal background check. Or, there should be universal background check, meaning every sale, even individuals. That's a can of worms, but let me let me tell you the biggest problem I have with it. The biggest problem I have with it is it's not enforceable until after the fact. What I mean by that, if I sell a gun to somebody, let's just say there is a universal background check, and nobody in 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 Virginia, as a matter of fact, there is one. I mean, in Virginia. A couple years ago, Governor Northam, Blackface Northam, he passed a law that we can't do uh, private sales without going to a dealer and doing an FFL transfer. Now, let me sidebar. I, I think if you don't know the individual you're selling a gun to, that's the responsible thing to do. Do I think it's a requirement? Not necessarily. But uh, I've sold guns to family members and close friends in, in years past. And had no heartburn because I knew the people. I, I, you know, I knew they weren't felons. I knew they were responsible. I knew they weren't suicidal. Whatever the case may be, if it's a stranger, uh, I've I've done that before too. But in those cases, typically I would go to a, through a dealer and just do a do a FFL transfer because I think it's a responsible thing to do. Uh, but with a universal background check, you couldn't even sell a gun to a brother or a cousin, or your closest high school friend, even though you grew up with him, you've been around him for your whole life. So I say it's unenforceable. What I mean without, after the fact, what I mean is if you sell a gun to somebody, um, they don't know it. I mean, it's not like, you know, some light goes off somewhere that somebody sold a gun that didn't have a background check. The only way that it ever it could ever turn up is if that gun was used in a crime and it was tracked back to you. If you're not familiar with how that's done, let me give, give you a real quick synopsis. Colt makes the Anaconda revolver. 
So they made serial number 123. And in a, in a crime, it was determined that serial number 123 was found at the crime, and it was used to, to kill somebody, or maybe it didn't even kill somebody, it was just used in a crime. They contact Colt. They don't know who bought that. The FBI or the police don't know who, 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 belongs, who owns that gun unless they, you know, somebody tells them. So they go to Colt, and Colt says, oh, we sold that to Acme Gun Shop in Phoenix, Arizona. And the FBI then goes to Phoenix, Arizona to Acme Gun Shop, says, let me see your records. Anaconda model, serial number 123, who bought it? Oh, you know, Crazy Out 99 bought that gun, sent it to this FFL dealer. Uh, actually, they might not even know. If I bought it online, they might just, they're, they're going to go to the FFL dealer that I had it shipped to to pick it up. And then they go to that dealer where the actual in-person transfer took place. And they go through his 4473s on record. And that's how they find out who bought it. And then they come up to me and says, Crazy Out 99, where's this gun? You know, I sold it. Um, do you have proof of selling it? Whatever. Um, doesn't matter. Now I'm guilty of a crime because... There was a universal background check, and I sold a gun, and you know, so that's the only way they'd find out it after the fact. So how could they find out sooner than that? The only way they could find out sooner than that is if they do a gun registration, an across-the-board gun registration. Well, that's uh, unconstitutional. Uh, it's against the law, and it's unconstitutional. And the reason is, if you, unless you were born last night, and and or you're uh, an extreme liberal, you know the reason for the Second Amendment wasn't about hunting. It really wasn't even about personal defense. It was about defending our country from a tyrannical, uh, tyrannical government, or you know, defending your, our, ourself, our, our society from a tyrannical government. So who's going to have that gun registry? The potentially tyrannical government. They're going to have that gun registry. And uh, so when they want to come get the guns, they'll have exactly where to go. So that's, that's the big, big problem with it. The other problem is it's really not doable because even if you did it today, you would have to say, not just for every sale going forward, that wouldn't capture hundreds of millions of guns that are already out there. You'd have to say, any gun you have, you need to you know, document the make, model, and serial number, probably even pictures, Send it to the ATF so I can put it in their in their gun registry. Uh, it's just not going to happen. I mean, people are just aren't going to do it. They're just not. Um, you can say I won't comply or whatever. You know, beat that drum. I'm not beating that drum. I'm saying people just aren't going to do it. Now, some people are sure, but a lot of people aren't. Um, so, but ultimately, it comes down to this: you, a gun registration, a national, a universal background check, or a common sense background check, or whatever you want to call it requires a gun registration to be effective and that's not going to happen uh, not in our lifetime uh, there's going to be a push for it i mean there's always a push for something tyrannical but uh, we got to keep fighting it so that's all i'm going to say there final reminder may 31st race rule don't be a felon uh if you're going to be a felon be a quiet felon uh don't be careful where you you know where you go to shoot your gun if you're just going to keep a brace on it. I'm not telling you to break the law. I'm certainly not going to um, because I have confidence that it's going to get overturned. Uh, there's, I don't know how much stuff you're following, but I'm following a lot of stuff and it's, it's looking good. Slow but steady. You know, slow but steady. That's all I've got for you, uh, Patriots. Uh, I appreciate you. Please like and comment. Uh, give me a like on Facebook uh, and subscribe, subscribe on YouTube. That'd be awesome. Um, last thing I'll leave you with is my new slogan. Uh, you've, you've seen me before with the, uh, I am the militia shirt from Colleen Noir, 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 uh, and, and that, that kind of thing. So my new slogan at the end of these is going to be, we are the militia. You and I are the militia. Hope you guys found this interesting enough to watch to the end and I hope you'll have a great day keep fighting a good fight